Today, we're going to talk about some really interesting moments from courtrooms that have been shared millions of times on social media. These moments have been watched by millions of people all over the world. So let's jump straight into it and see what all the buzz is about. A woman named Denise from Canada felt really sad when her boyfriend left her. But then she found out that he left because he won a massive 3.5 million lottery prize with a ticket she allegedly bought. Denise wanted to get half of the money her ex-partner Maurice won, along with 286,000 more for hurting her feelings. They used to live in Ontario, and every week they played Canada's lotto together. They had allegedly an agreement that if they ever won, they would split the money. They even talked about buying a big house and enjoying their love for muscle cars together. However, Maurice said he never agreed to share any winnings with Denise, according to the Sun newspaper. Maurice and Denise lived together without being married, which is called a common law relationship. In Canada, after living together for at least a year, couples in such relationships have rights similar to those of married couples. Denise also had a teenage daughter who lived with Maurice for over two years. Denise's lawyer, Stephen Pickard, explained that when Maurice collected his lottery winnings, the Ontario lottery regulator only gave him half of the money. They left the other 1.75 million with the courts to decide who should rightfully receive it. Denise found out that someone in their town had won half of a 7 million prize with a lottery ticket. Maurice told her clearly that they hadn't won. The next day, when Denise returned home, she was surprised to find that Maurice had packed up and taken away all his clothes, most of his other belongings, and even his Canadian passport. Take a second to subscribe and like the video to not miss any content. She said she discovered that her former partner sent a message to his boss saying he was leaving his job. He also mentioned in the message that he had ended his relationship with Denise. The message read, Denise and I are no longer together. Since I left her Monday, another life-changing thing has happened. I am sad to tell you by text, but I will not be coming back to work. What do you think about this case? Who should get the rest of the lottery win? Take a second to subscribe and like the video to not miss any content. In next viral courtroom moment, man with three daughters who were hurt by Larry Nassar attempted to confront the former doctor in a courtroom in Eaton County, Michigan. It happened. The security stopped him before he could do anything. Randall Margraves said he was very upset and yelled at Nassar. But the judge, Janice Cunningham, said he couldn't do that in the court. Then he asked the judge if he could have some time alone with Nassar. I would ask you, as part of the sentencing, to grant me five minutes in a locked room with this demon, he asked. Would you give me one minute? The judge declined, saying, that's not how our legal system works. Well, I'm going to have to, Margraves responded, and he launched into a sprint toward Nassar. Security acted quickly to prevent him from reaching Nassar, grabbing him from behind. He became violent after listening to brave young women sharing their stories of being sexually abused by Nassar over the last 20 years. In the past two weeks, over 150 women spoke up about Nassar's actions in an Ingham County courtroom. This week, many more have come forward in Eaton County Court to speak out against Nassar's abuse. Nassar used to be the doctor for Michigan State University. He confessed in court to doing bad things. He said he did sexual things to girls when he was supposed to be treating them as a doctor. Take a second to subscribe and like the video to help the channel creating more content for your enjoyment. In next court moment, Joel Delgado in a wheelchair got away from a police officer by pretending to be hurt while being arrested, and from Arkansas claiming he got hurt during an arrest. But then, something unbelievable happened. He suddenly jumped out of his wheelchair and ran away from the police while they were taking him to court. According to the local newspaper in town, Joel Sanchez Delgado, who is 41 years old, was on his way to court in Little Rock for a regular hearing about drug-related charges. But something unexpected happened. While he was being taken there by a sheriff's deputy, he suddenly ran away. This led to a big search to find him. The body camera worn by a deputy in Pulaski County captured the whole incident. In the video, the parolet can be heard saying, my shoe, my shoe, as a trick to distract the deputy. Then, the parolet suddenly jumps out of his chair and starts running away while the deputy follows him. Despite his attempt to escape, the parolee's freedom didn't last long. He was found several hours later and now faces charges for escaping, along with the other crimes he's accused of committing. Delgado is facing a serious crime accusation of selling drugs illegally, specifically methamphetamine. He got caught with it. Back in June of 2019, he got a four-year prison sentence. 
he admitted to committing theft by receiving stolen goods. However, by October of the same year, he was given permission to leave prison early under parole. Next case shocked the world. When the judge said Ricky Hand would spend 40 years in prison, he got angry and threw feces. A man from Springfield planned to throw his feces at a court hearing, but nobody checked him before he went into the Clark County courtroom. Ricky Hand, who is 46 years old, said he didn't do it when faced with new charges for throwing the bottle inside the Clark County court. He might go to prison for four to six more years because of this, according to prosecutors. Hand, who lives in Springfield, was in court to get his sentence for some robberies. He hid bottles filled with poop in his pants to sneak them into the courtroom, said Clark County Sheriff Gene Kelly. Hand admitted he did wrong things. He said he did seven bad things, like stealing and breaking into places. He might go to jail for 52 years because of these crimes. When the police looked into it, they found out Hand was helpful. He told them about some of the 14 times he stole from businesses and broke into places. The police said that in many of the robberies, the thief used weapons like a knife and a gun. Later on, they found out that the gun wasn't real, but it still frightened the victims, according to Jordan. When a person walks in with a gun that appears to be real and you're being robbed, you're going to believe it's real, the detective said. What do you think about this weird case? Do you agree with the judge? In next case, there was chaos when a man from the area who killed a young mother was taken out by force. The sad story about the death of Latrice Mays, who was a mother of five, became even more intense. This happened because the man who was found guilty of killing her reacted violently in the courtroom when he heard his punishment. Jalil Hoskins did apologize with tears to Mays's family for what happened last March. He mentioned how Mays's body was thrown into a trash dumpster. He also said to her family and the judge that he loved Mays and didn't mean to kill her. When Hoskins was given a 50 to 100 year prison sentence, he got really angry. He threw the podium toward Judge James Robert Redford and tried to move forward, but court deputies stopped him. His eyes showed how mad he was. While he was being taken out of the courtroom, Hoskins family started shouting at the victim's family. The victim's parents had already spoken emotionally in court earlier. A little while after Hoskins suddenly admitted to second-degree murder during his trial, he was sentenced. This came after some intense events, though not as violent as before, when Hoskins stopped the trial by confessing on another day. Assistant Kent County prosecutor said Hoskins shouldn't get any special treatment for confessing. She asked the judge to give him a sentence that would mean he'd spend most of his life in prison. Hoskins murdered Mays in her apartment. Then, he put her body in a dumpster outside an apartment complex in Wyoming. Prosecutors said that Hoskins killed Mays because she was going to tell the police about Hoskins hurting the father of two of Mays' kids. Hoskins told the judge and families that he didn't mean to kill Mays. He said it happened during an argument that got out of control. Hoskins planned the murder and slowly strangled Mays. Redford, in his decision, said that Hoskins made things worse by putting Mays' body in the garbage, where it was probably burned. This meant Mays' family couldn't have a funeral or a place to remember her. Hoskins looked at the family of the person who was hurt and said sorry. He then talked to the judge, saying he cared deeply for the person who was hurt and that he worked really hard to take care of them and their daughter, whom he cared for as well. Before this happened, everybody looked at me as a good person, Hoskins said. In the blink of an eye, I'm a monster. Now we have a former cop who did illegal activities while on duty. A Florida deputy who was 28 years old got sent to jail for over 12 years. He got caught on a body camera planting drugs on drivers when he stopped them for small traffic violations. He did this because he wanted to join the narcotics division of the police. Because of his actions, prosecutors had to dismiss nearly 120 cases. During the trial, the people trying to prove the defendant guilty said that the drugs found by investigators were planted by him during his traffic stops. We don't know why the defendant did what he did. Earlier this year, a former captain from the Jackson County Sheriff's Office named Scott Edwards told a newspaper that working in the narcotics division meant getting paid more, working extra hours, getting other benefits that are harder to measure, and having more status. Wester lost his job at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office in September 2018 and got arrested in July 2019 because of an investigation. He had his trial in May 2021. 
Kimberly Kessler, who was found guilty of killing 34-year-old Jolene Cummings, has been sentenced to spend the rest of her life in prison. Cummings disappeared in May 2018, and her body has never been found. Kessler and Cummings used to work together at a hair salon near Fernandina Beach. Because Kessler was convicted of first-degree murder, and the death penalty wasn't an option in this case, life in prison was the mandatory punishment. Even though it wasn't necessary, Judge James Daniel made it clear that Kessler would still receive this sentence. When Kessler was brought into the courtroom in a wheelchair, she started shouting right away, accusing one of her former defense attorneys. She repeated this claim each time she was wheeled into the courtroom. Because of her outbursts, the judge had to remove her from the courtroom. In court, seven officers from Nassau County's Corrections Department talked about different times when there was feces involved, saying rude things, not eating, and behaving badly if Kessler doesn't get her way. Next horrific case shows two women from South Carolina that are going to stay in prison forever because they killed a little child in 2009. The prosecutor of the case said on Friday that this punishment is fair for what they did. Erica Butts and Shanita Cunningham, both 25 years old, were given life sentences by a judge in Charleston. This happened exactly two years after three-year-old Serenity Richardson passed away while she was with them. They admitted they did the crime. Elizabeth Gordon, who helps with legal matters in Charleston County, said, It's really hard to find the right words to explain what these women did to that poor little girl. She explained that they kept hitting the girl with a belt and plastic hangers over and over again. You can see marks on her body where they hit her. Every part of her body was hurt, except for her feet. Serenity was staying with her godmother, Butts, who is also her mom's best friend and Butts's partner, Cunningham, in Somerville, South Carolina. They live there. They've been there for two weeks. Something bad happened during this time, Gordon said. Serenity's mom, Richardson, lives in Detroit. Gordon said, they said they hurt Serenity because she had an accident with the potty. They're saying they didn't realize their actions could kill her. Gordon said they were aware that their actions were not right. When Serenity stopped responding, they tried to wake her up by putting bleach and ice on her nose. Then Butts phoned her mother, who called 911. When the paramedics came, Serenity had already passed away for a while, according to Gordon. She mentioned that in her four years of handling cases involving victims like Serenity, this was the most horrific one she had encountered. Many times when a child is hurt so badly that they die, it's because someone did something wrong. Instead of making better choices, they chose to harm the child repeatedly. In 2009, around 2,000 children died because of abuse or neglect, as reported by the Child Welfare Information Center. But experts think this number might be even higher since many cases go unreported. Sadly, most of the victims are kids who are four years old or younger. Which courtroom moment do you think was the most brutal case? If you know court cases that could be featured on the channel, please write it in the comment section. Take a second to write your thoughts down below. Please subscribe to our channel and check out one of these videos. See you in next courtroom video. Take care.